in the first video of this series, I show you UAX in the context of my on-prem curator. This could be curator on-prem or QROC, the one that we know so well, so capable of detecting some things that were abnormal. But in this particular case, by virtue of getting some mail logs and uh, Windows logs, uh, it was able to fire an offense, which in this particular case was automatically escalated into, it can be manual or automatic, uh, escalated into the, I would say, the main component of UAX, which is case management with basically, in it, there is a component called Threat Investigator that automatically did from the from the offense, in the offense there were only, if I remember correctly, 18 logs and a few artifacts like IP addresses, hashes, and a few other things. But Threat Investigator took those elements, those artifacts, and said, you know what, Curator, now I want you to go ahead and tell me, perform an, an AQL search automatically, into curator actually was a stick and taxi that gets converted into aql and say tell me everything that you know not just eight those 18 logs tell me all you can get about it but also did the same thing via stick and taxi to crowdstrike which was getting the logs from some windows machines that were in azure are in Azure still, and that's a basically a honeypot that we put there that gets attacked very easily and very often. The machine is that Windows VMOS 3, which has the Falcon agent, but, but that is only sending logs to CrowdStrike. It's not sending logs to Curator or anywhere else. I say that for uh, because those those logs are very verbose and very costly for you to send it anywhere. In this particular case, uh, they are there. But Thread Investigator with a connector, with data connector that we have for UAX was able to, to tell CrowdStrike, tell me everything that you know about those artifacts that I found in this particular offense. That was a very interesting case in my view to, to show you that, but that's only a small part. One of the pods, PODs, the, one of the components of the containers that UAX, which runs on top of OpenShift, is made of. And the, the fact that runs on OpenShift means uh, makes it possible to run it like today in AWS, but uh, if you have a local instance of a shift, uh, IBM announced that in the near future you should be able to run uh, this instance uh, locally in case that there are some companies that do not want to send the logs into the cloud. But there's far many m more to be said about UAX, and that's what we're going to be doing next. The one thing I did not completely highlight about Threat Investigator is that when we see the the machine learning AI, whatever you want to call it, that performs these recommendations, how do I know, I mean, how do I see what are, what's the logic for this system to recommend me such actions? Well, if we go all here on the data sources done for that investigation, we'll see that uh, there are several data connectors, but the ones that were used in this particular case are this one for my Curera system, and these are, again, the, the, the from those 18 logs, it went ahead and found, sent 105 queries, 50 of them retrieved results. If we scroll here to the right, we see that, uh, that this is the CrowdStrike honeypot you know, sent 104 queries, 44 retrieve results. So that's that's the, the transparency of this AI ML module to tell you where those recommendations are. And I think that that is a, an interesting thing because you know for sure that you can, you, you know the, the reasoning, or parts of the reasoning behind uh, these recommendations. Another component that UBA, that Curera on-prem has is UBA, which on itself has a machine learning to know when people deviate from the normal way they use their system. And if I want to have visibility 
from UVA because as I said in a previous video, you don't have to even necessarily look into the curator's UI. You can do everything on the UAX. But in here, there is the capability for me to have the visualization of all that data. And all I need to do to get there is go here on the hamburger and go precisely to UBA. And this is going to be the same view that I would have had if I were going into the standard curator UI. Another important component that curator has is its ability to deal with flows. There's a lot of telemetry that you can gather about that and you don't necessarily want to send those flows those flows over here. Uh, well, if that's not what you want, you can use the integration that it has. And also with the network threat analytics component, which is a machine learning for flows that helps you determine out of the sea of flows that goes across an organization, what are the flows that are rare that I don't normally see? That doesn't mean that they are bad, but that gives them, gives them a level of suspiciousness that I want to be familiar with. Well, there is a component in UAX that allows you to bring all that information in here. And to go there, all you need to do is go here onto the hamburger and go into the network threat analytics. And you can see them in a tabular way over a map and see what are the the most common uh, traffic, etc. Right? More on that, we can do subsequent videos on it. But let's move on into another modules of UAX. Dashboards are something very useful. You don't want to see the data in a tabular spreadsheet type of form. I want to see it on, on, on some graphics. And UAX has a pod or a component precisely for that. Things are, are interesting, like in the curator, you can have it in this type of format. If you are a fan of Grafana, you can have them those in Grafana. But what is unique about these dashboards is that the searches behind it can be done on KQL. And more on that later when I talk about the Data Explorer part. UAX has built in something very remarkable, which is a column-oriented database that can be searched using KQL. And I have a series of videos that goes and explains the benefits and examples on how that is done. But basically, you can ingest immense amounts of data that probably will not be suitable for something like an on-prem type of environment or when you want to have something that is grows dynamically with the demand uh, and shrinks accordingly as well and and that column oriented database that that is searchable uh, uh, with kql as an option which is a step forward from aql and uh, again you, on, on the videos you you get uh, more details about it. But when you have all those logs in here, what are the things that you can actually do? Well, the Data Explorer module, also one of the most important one in UAX, allows you to search in that column-oriented database and also outside to other log sources into Curator, but have some things that are very unique. So, for example, if we go here and you go there by going into the hamburger and going into Data Explorer and going on the search, you have the option for making KQL searches. You know, that's the events database, project only these columns and filter, pipe that into the next one, which is only for those events that are five minutes ago and take the first 10,000 of them, right? And so, not only you can do searches on KQL, but you can also do them in stick format, particularly when you want to go outside your curator environment. And you can even send, send searches into curators using curator's AQL language uh, to retrieve that data. So 
So for example, let's say that you, let's go back to that case that we were investigating in the first video. Even though Threat Investigator already searched everything that is possibly known about all these uh, IOCs and artifacts, let's say that I still want to search something on this particular hash. Well, I can right click on it and do query in Data Explorer. When I do that, I'm taken automatically into Data Explorer and I can conduct this search. I want to go outside and that's when I'm going to use a stick as the format to go outside. Uh, and this is not going to find any any uh, incidents since uh, this offense was investigated last week and this not recent data. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to expand the time frame and I'm going to say, well, uh, let's make this uh, going from, I don't know, from this date until today. I'm going to apply that and I don't want all those uh, data sources. I, I only want to search in CrossStrike, for example. So I'm going to go here into the data sources. I'm going to go and this is the honeypot that I had for CrowdStrike. Yep, that's precisely the one that I uh, that I definitely want. And notice that I can expand this search. I have, I have already, uh, had already expanded, but uh, if I want to do this in a visual format, I can add additional conditions graphically here without even, you know, I don't have to master the language. This is very intuitive. And stick is a lingua franca of uh, of, of this uh, way of talking about IOCs from different uh, systems. And, and all I need to do then is uh, click on that uh, to run that query. And then again, that's going out, Data Explorer going out to cross strike in this particular case and bring in uh, all that data for me to see. Another important component of UAEX is the Data Detection and Response Center. And what that has to do is also with this uh, database of data, you want to schedule searches. So not only you want to be told by curator and other things about stuff that happened and you open a case with it, but you also want to have the capability of proactively executing some safe searches that you schedule to be run every minute, every 10 minutes, every hour, every day, whatever, to go against this data and find if the events or the things that I'm searching for have occurred. And if they do, you proactively can open a case to perform an investigation. So that's another way of generating and opening uh, cases. And what is remarkable about this uh, uh, detection and response center is again the way and the, the, the different ways that it has to express those uh, rules. And we call them rules because if the logic that what you are searching for is met, then you probably will want a case being open. Let's actually go into the detection and response center. We get here by going into the hamburger, into the detect and response center. And what I want you to see in here are the rules, the rule formats are supported. Sigma is another very popular format to express rule conditions. In fact, when, whenever a new threat or vulnerability or exploitation of a vulnerability occurs, typically there are Sigma rules are produced out there and they're agnostic. They should be working uh, in any system. Well, this detection and response center natively supports Sigma, but also stick and actually both. Let's actually take a look at this one that is a stick and sigma. Why, why is this shown in there? And, and I'm picking on that one just because it's the first one. But uh, well, because notice that you can have it in stick format, and it also gets translated into sigma format as well. And you can run that query, or you can have it a schedule, or whatever it is that you that you actually want to do to perform those detection. But also, you have the same capability in KQL and actually even in Curator's AQL language. But let's take a look at the KQL and see the rules that are uh, based on, on, on 
let's take a look at this one, Ryuk IOC. And here you see the KQL search. Again, I'm not going to go into the details, and this may sound cryptic, but I can assure you, you watch some of the videos that I did in this, and, and, and in half a day you will be proficient in KQL. And you can click on this button and actually perform this search in Data Explorer. And when I was looking at this interface, I couldn't stop thinking of the use case manager that exists in Curator. I see a lot of analogies on, the, on all the filters that you can do to search for the specific rule that you want. And to complete the high overview on all the components from UAX, let's talk about the threat intelligence analytics. And this is very something very similar that we also have in Curator that allows us to go into the X-Force and talk about cases that there might be doing perform uh, some searches or go in here and specify an IP address, a URL or, or hash or whatever it is that I want a search to be performed even though we know that uh, Threat Investigator already used that component when, it, when I was uh, doing my search. So that was an overview of the UAX leveraging, you know, curator, other sources. In the next video, my good friend Edward Johnson uh, is going to help me uh, set up the system to show instead of uh, CrowdStrike being the source in that we're doing the, the, the integration with, we're going to be doing with Microsoft Sentinel. That there are some things are detected up there in Sentinel. How do, how do they play along with this UAX uh, infrastructure?